In this video, we're gonna stow and deploy two trolling motors automatically at the push of a button. Hey everybody, AJ here, and welcome back to the Eagle Ray channel where we do all things DIY electric boats. Marine motors, batteries, solar panels, you name it, if it's got volts and it's on a boat, you are in the right place. Today, we have got a grab bag of tasks that is gonna culminate in one big goal. We need to stow and deploy dual trolling motors automatically. I revealed this dual thruster project last week and it's not quite send ready yet because I don't wanna lift and deploy these motors manually while I'm out on the water. So I bought a couple linear actuators to automate this process. These are made by Vivor. They're kind of like the Harbor Freight of China. And I know what you're probably thinking. Harbor Freight is kind of the Harbor Freight of China because they fill their store with nothing but cheap Chinese imports. But Vivor is just like that, except they don't have a storefront. So they're kind of like an online version of Harbor Freight. They got a bunch of junk in their store, but here and there you can find a diamond in the rough. And these, I don't know if I'd classify as a diamond in the rough. They work. Um, they were a little bit flawed when they showed up. So one of them makes a really loud clicking sound as it's almost fully retracted, which is kind of annoying. And then one of them is slightly slower than the other one, even though they're both the exact same item number. So that's a little frustrating since I'm going to try and keep them in sync. But I think we can make it work. Um, so these are 20 inch stroke length, which is exactly the size that I needed to move 30 pound thrust trolling motors. And these move like a snail, less than half an inch per second. Take a quick look at how fast they move. If you want to upgrade to faster speed and higher quality, you could get this progressive automation actuator for more than three times the price. Personally, I am gonna stick with the slow, cheap one, thank you very much. We saw the dual motors running briefly in last week's video, but this week we'll actually install the lifts so we can deploy those motors on the lake for the first time. But see, here is the problem. This is where the actuator mounts and it attaches to the trolling motor up here, but the trolling motor is all the way down here when it's fully deployed. A lot of YouTubers have tried to solve this puzzle by flipping the actuator upside down and attaching the neck bolt to the little flange at the top of the bullet but I really don't wanna go down that route. First of all, that puts this actuator neck down into the water so that when you retract it back upward, it's gonna bring droplets and moisture with it up into the case. And this Vivor is not waterproof. If you want a waterproof actuator, you're gonna pay several hundred dollars for it. So I wanna avoid that. And just putting this little neck down in the water is gonna create a little bit of extra drag, which I'd like to avoid as well. I wanna design this dual thruster system so that it's really easy to attach it to any boat or kayak. And so it needs to be very performant. And for that reason, we need to point this actuator upward, not downward. But that's a huge problem because if you look at how it's gonna sit relative to the trolling motor, there's gonna be a big gap between the attachment points. Because on the trolling motor, the best place to attach is the depth collar. And when you deploy the trolling motor down into the water, the collar is gonna be right here next to the base of the actuator. That's the part that needs to attach to the top of the actuator. And so you, in order to connect these two, we're gonna have to create a custom bracket that connects to the collar and then extends up the entire length of the actuator so that it can attach to the neck bolt. I have scrap aluminum. I have a circular saw with a dull blade. What could go wrong? I tried several iterations of connecting brackets and all of them have been pretty terrible so far. This one, for example, caused the actuator and the motor to try and twist around each other like a pretzel. This one was quite a bit better, but as it rose to the top of its length, it would get caught on the top edge of the actuator's case. And then when you tried to deploy it downward, it would break everything. This version is getting pretty close, but you see this little bracket here? This is a problem because it's slightly offset from the center line of this bracket, which which means it's offset from the trolling motor and the actuator. And that creates a twisting action between the trolling motor and the actuator when the lift happens. That can't work, so we've gotta get this bracket into the center line. We've gotta move it over a little bit, or we've gotta create a version of this where it's just in the middle already. I tried to weld a separate piece into the center line, and there's a million reasons why that's never gonna work well. So I definitely want to use the press brake to bend this in place, but that means I'm gonna to have to create an entire different shape for the body all the way down from about here on out. It's gonna to have to do this shepherd's crook shape to wrap around so that it still supports that piece as it shifts over into the center line. And that's getting complicated enough that I don't think I can do it with a circular saw. I'm, I'm not that good with a circular saw. So what I need to do is level up my metalworking chops 
from the little leagues into the minors. Metalworking just takes so long that I haven't had time for more than 90% of the projects I want to work on. But if I could enlist a robot to do it for me, I could work 10 times as fast. Not that robot. That robot. I bought this CNC plasma cutting table many months ago. It's been collecting dust in a corner in my garage ever since because I didn't have a plasma cutter yet. So I went out and bought one for this video. This is the Hynade Cut 60 DN. It is the best price I could find on all of Amazon for a plasma cutter that has good reviews and also has a connector in the back for plugging in a CNC. I've never used a plasma cutter before, but luckily if this CNC table works, I probably won't have to do much. With this machine, I should be able to import my CAD model and have it do all the heavy lifting for me. This is the Langmuir Crossfire CNC plasma table. They make a large version of this, but this is the more hobbyist sized version. Now I gotta figure out how to install these stepper motors. Gotta make sure it doesn't go thirsty. Langmuir wrote us a program called Fire Control. You can run it on any PC. It'll take imports from CAD software and it'll allow you to just hit the start button and it'll move the plasma table to the right spot and activate your plasma cutter for you. So we're gonna plug in the plasma cutter and then we're gonna run a few test cuts before we upload some files into Fire Control and start cutting for real. Before I plug the cutter directly into the table, I'm gonna make sure the cutter works by itself first. I've never really used a plasma cutter before, but I'm just gonna try ripping a cut across some scrap metal and see how it goes. My hand is obviously not very steady. Looks like it's working though. Now I gotta figure out how to get the crossfire to trigger the plasma cutter to turn on and off at the right time. This little plug came with the cutter and it has four pins to choose from. Apparently the top two are for starting the torch, the others are for controlling the Z height of the torch, which is a feature that's only available on some tables, not available on mine, so I only have to wire up these first two pins. I am not a CAD expert by any stretch of the imagination, but I have been using Onshape a lot recently. This is a web-based CAD program, and I'm actually not sure if it has any cam features. We do need cam features in order to get this bracket done. So what I'm gonna do is export a DXF file out of Onshape, into a program called SheetCam. It's an open source CAM program, which can export a tap file into Fire Control. From there, we can run the CNC. So it's three different programs I'm using. There are tutorials all over YouTube for all three of them. We're not gonna get into the details of how they each work, but if you wanna try this for yourself and you need some help, I'm happy to try and help you as best I can if you come to the Eagle Ray live stream on Sundays. So I've got a fresh piece of sheet on the table and I've turned on the dry run feature so that we can hopefully just see what the CNC is gonna do before it actually attempts to cut for the first time. Let's see if that works. seems to be working great. Well, it's cutting a little close. Whoops. This is why we do a dry run. Okay, so I think I've got it dialed in. I did a couple more dry runs just to make sure everything was aligned. What I should have done is cut a little bit of extra margin on this plate. I neglected to make the plate longer than the cut. So this plate's exactly 22 inches wide and it's gonna try and cut exactly 22 inches of bracket. And that's potentially a problem because if it falls off the edge, then we might lose the arc off of the plasma cutter. We'll see how it goes. This is gonna be the first attempt to rip a cut of the actual bracket itself. Let's see if we can take it off of the dry run setting. And let's see what happens.
But as soon as it ran to the edge, the arc went out and wouldn't cut anything after that. So we're gonna have to see if we can start this cut halfway through from this spot and cut the rest. Whoops, so you can't hit that button in order to start from somewhere in the middle. If you hit that button, it will start from the very beginning of the cut again, and that's what it was trying to do. So what we have to do, I think, is press that button where it says run from line. Let's see if that works. Okay, so it generated a new program from that, and then we can hit start. Lesson learned, same thing again. The other side of the plate still didn't have enough margin on the edge, so we lost the plasma again. We're almost there. One more cut to finish this bracket. Let's try it. Looks pretty good. We're gonna get it out from under the cutter and see what the final results are. Hey, it's separated. That's a good sign. You can see there's a lot of dross on the other side. I need to play with the settings to see if I can get rid of some of that, but we can uh, just grind that off pretty quickly anyway. So there's some cleanup work to do on this. Let's get that going. I'm calling it good enough. It's horseshoe and hand grenade time. Let's get out on the water and test this contraption on the lake and see if it works. So the very first run of this motor is not going well, guys. Watch this. Pushing it very lightly. That beam is not very secure. The actuator is not very secure. Same thing on the other side, but it's even worse on the other side because the other side is running a different spec motor. I actually have a Minn Kota Enduro over here, and I have a Motor Guide R3 over here, and they're supposed to be both rated for 30 pound thrust, but one of them is obviously much more powerful than the other because I'm going in circles right now. The Minn Kota is winning by a long shot and I'm only giving it quarter throttle approximately. <laughs> if I give it full throttle, I'm afraid I might damage these brackets. See, I didn't spend very long making these. I'm gonna spend a lot more time building that up in future videos. But this is a fun first test. It's good to know that it moves at all, but uh, obviously not gonna be able to steer very well with this. So I'm not gonna get far from the dock. I've got to, I've got to row back if I wanna go straight. Well, it's a work in progress, but you know what? The actuators worked pretty well. I was impressed. They were very slow, as we knew they were going to be, and I might upgrade to faster ones in the future, but next week I think I'm going to focus on the wiring. I want to show you guys how I wired that DPDT switch so that we could move both of those actuators simultaneously. So if you want to see that, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit all of the things. Join us for the live stream on Sunday. I'm still giving away this Milwaukee Angle Grinder as soon as we reach 100 people in the chat. And by the way, 
It's really nice out on the water right now here in the Southwest. I don't know if that's true elsewhere in the country, but if you've got a chance before it gets too cold, get out there and have some fun before you winterize your boat. Until I see you in the live stream, I hope you have a good one. Take care.